So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how the module is laid out. There are a couple of key sections, but knowing where everything is located will help you work with it a little bit easier. So first off, right along the top of the module, there's a row of buttons. You can see over on the left here, it says tracks. There are numbers one through 16 in gold above these buttons. Each of these represent the 16 tracks of Gate Nuevo. When you click one of these buttons down below, it will select those steps. So I'll talk about this more in a second, but there you can see I click some buttons. And as I click these, it will choose whatever the steps are for that track. Whichever of these buttons is illuminated white is the track that you are editing. So here you can see the white button is number two. I could click over here. I'm editing track three, four, five, six, and so on down to 16. Now below the, uh, below the track buttons is this large grid of 64 buttons. This is your step programming grid. And as I mentioned in the intro video, you can click on these buttons. We'll take a lot more of a deeper dive on step editing in a future video, but this is where all of the steps of the sequencer can be edited. Now, in a gate sequencer, what a step represents is a step represents the on and off state for that sequencer. So if I was to add the scope here uh, to our session, and I'm gonna route the output here, let's take a look at what this is doing and watch the correlation between what the cursor is encountering. So is it encountering a step that is on or off? And what happens over here on the scope? So as I hit play, you can see that each time the cursor encounters one of these steps, what's actually happening is the control voltage signal on the step output is jumping up. It's becoming high at five volts. And when the cursor encounters a step that is extinguished or not lit, it will go low, it will go back to zero volts. And this really, by the way, is the essence of what a gate sequencer is doing. Okay, so that's track buttons and step buttons. And like I said, we'll talk a lot more about step editing in the future. Now in the bottom left of the step button area, there's this kind of step editing toolbar. And this is where we can create different kinds of steps, or we can manipulate the steps that we already have by nudging, deleting, or copying them talk more about that. In the bottom right of the step editing area is our transport control area. So this is where we can patch a play, reset, and clock signal in. This will allow us to either start or stop the playing externally to reset or cause the cursor to jump back to the beginning of the sequence, or to synchronize the tempo with an external source like your DAW or external hardware or just another module. Moving over from the right there a little bit, we have play and reset, so these will start and stop. As I mentioned previously, you can see the cursor is here in the top right. Clicking reset, it will cause the cursor to actually jump back here to the zeroth step so that when we hit play again, it's right there at the beginning of our sequence. Over to the right from reset is BPM. BPM stands for beats per minute. This controls how fast or slow the sequencer is going. So you can see if I crank it up here, it's going really fast. If I turn it to the left, it's gonna go down slower. And then lastly, length, we'll touch on when we get into step editing. This allows us to set the length of multiple things, including the steps and the patterns. All right, continuing on our tour of the layout of this module, in the bottom left area here of the module, you can see there's this large LCD that's telling us information about what's going on. To the left of that, there are buttons. These change what information we're seeing on the LCD. And below the LCD, there are a set of four buttons. The two on the left will allow us to navigate which setting we're editing, and the two on the right will allow us to edit the value of that setting. We will definitely talk more about this section in future videos. There are a couple of other pieces of information though on the screen that I want to point out. The top left will, of, of the LCD will always tell you what setting you are editing. The large value in the middle will always tell you what the value of that setting is. In the top right, it will always give you some context about what it is that you're looking at. So in this case, you can see it says track one, and we can click through and it will change which track we're looking at. The bottom right will give you information about what the sequencer is doing. So in this case, you can see it shows the BPM. When we use the uh, various info modes, it will tell us some other things there too. And then lastly, you may have noticed, as I've been moving my mouse in the bottom left corner of the LCD, 
Each time I move over a button, it will give me a little bit of a uh, help text. It will tell me what, what that thing does. Uh, sometimes, like in the case here up on the track, you can see it's telling me that certain uh, shortcuts will do something. And in other areas, if you hold down a shortcut key, so here I'm holding down a key on the keyboard, it will tell me what that thing does as I'm holding it down. I will point this out more as we go as it is a useful thing to utilize. Moving along with our tour here of what is on the module, this row of 16 buttons here is going to be your pattern. We will have multiple videos dedicated to what a pattern is and how you might use it. Down below, there's the toolbar for editing and manipulating patterns, either randomizing, generating, inverting, clearing, that type of thing. There's also this, this area with the pink button here. This is the pattern chain area. We'll definitely talk about this in the future. Rounding out our tour here of the interface, there are two more areas that I want to talk about. This little column here, you can see there's a darker column of jacks. These are all input jacks, and they allow us to either trigger these pattern modifications using an external trigger, or in this case, there is a pattern jack which will allow us to set which pattern it is that we're playing using a control voltage. Lastly, on the far right of the module is our output bank, and this is where all of the step and accent outputs are for each of the 16th tracks. Down below that, there are some other details about what is going on with the sequencer, either its internal clock pulse, or when it is performing a reset, or even a gate for it if it is running or not. And then lastly, of course, you likely recognize this jack here is MIDI out, where it will be sending a MIDI standard drum signals for each of the 16 tracks. We will talk about all of these features more in future videos, but I wanted you to start with a good idea of where everything is located to make it easier to find your way around.